Father, when we think about all that you've done, we cannot help but to give you praise. And on today, it just makes sense to say thank you. And thank you for being better to us than we could have ever been to ourselves. And I thank you today, God, that you rose. And because you got up, so can we. And the only reason why is because your word still works. So God, speak to us today. We need to hear from you. Say what you want to say. And say it in such a way that it changes our lives. And after we've hugged and kissed, we'll leave here different than we came. Now destroy any type of distraction, any act of the enemy to keep us from hearing what you have to say. And we give you praise in advance. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Come on, if you're excited on this Resurrection Sunday to be in God's house, help me celebrate the Lord in this place today. Come on, y'all can do better than that. It is Resurrection Sunday. And because he lives, you can face tomorrow. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. We conclude our sermon series, and still I rise. Been waiting patiently for this final conversation. And so we conclude these messages in this 28th chapter. As you can imagine, hopefully by now you've already gathered the previous chapters up to this point. So when we get to this, I just want you to be intent as we listen to the narrative of God's holy word, beginning at verse 1 and reading to you from the New International Version. Here's how the word of God is recorded. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And there was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and just sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. And the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was. Crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. In fact, come and see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. And this is the word of God. Let the people of God say thanks be to God. I want to preach to you for a few moments on this Resurrection Sunday from the thought I told you so. I told you so. Will y'all help me to preach this? Turn to your neighbor, look at him, and say, we've been talking for a minute now. But I told you he was going to do it. Amen. Look back at him. Say, you must not have been listening then. Because I told you first that he was going to do it. You may be seated. Resurrection Sunday is the culmination of our Christian faith. 
but it is more than Easter egg hunts, pastel colors, and new outfits. For us, it is the celebration of victory over death. And let's be clear, it is not just some reenactment of a Broadway drama. He really did die. And because he died, you and I have the promise of eternal life. And I know in our culture today, we have become addicted to this search for a problemless type religion. But that's not our story in here. We did not get to this point without some difficulty in our lives. Resurrection, in fact, is the result of a series of adverse events. Without the betrayal of Judas, he would have never been captured. Without the denial of Peter, he would not have been by himself. Without the violence of Good Friday, there would be no death. And without his death, there would be no forgiveness of our sins. Some things had to happen in order for us to be where we are. And the same is true for you and I. Because we showed up today restored, but it's the result of a series of adverse events. And the truth is, the only reason we're here is because God keeps his promise to deliver us from adversity. Whether you are a skeptic or a longtime veteran of the faith, all of us, in truth, would really just kind of prefer some assurance that no matter what we're going through, we will survive. I ain't no problem dealing with it, just... Give me some type of certainty that soon this will all be over. Well, that's what's in the word of God. That's why the resurrection should not catch us by surprise. And it doesn't if you know God's word. Because Jesus said if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up again. And with as many promises as God has given us in his word, we still kind of want to see it in order to believe it. And the truth is, if you just keep going, you'll see that God keeps his promise. That's the reality of our text today, beloved, that these two women who show up Early in the morning, we esteem them for being the first ones there on the scene on the resurrection. But far too often, y'all, the truth is we kind of gloss over what they were actually carrying. This was not some historical excursion that they were on, y'all. They had really gone through some difficult events previously. They were actually carrying with them the weight of what they had seen. They had just seen Jesus beaten and crucified. They've had two nights now to replay in their minds the brutality of Christ on the cross and his death. They're grieving but still trying to stay strong for everybody else. And now they're headed to the tomb early in the morning to do what the others wouldn't do. And that's finished the burial process. Does that sound familiar to y'all? Because that's what black women have been doing in this country for centuries. <laughs> Grieving silently while having to be strong for everybody else doing the work that nobody else wants to do without getting any of the credit for their sacrifice, holding everybody else up while they're broken inside, trying to be strong for people who are going to leave before the repast is ever over. And just like black women, they keep going even while carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. Tell somebody, thank God for black women today. 
And all of us have a season where we learn how to keep going while carrying a heavy weight on our shoulders. And if you just keep going, you will find out that there's greater in front of you than there is behind you. Whew, hallelujah. And I know what really keeps us going, though. Not that we have everything figured out, y'all. But it's the confidence that we serve a God who, if he said he's going to do it, he will do just what he said. He promised that we were more than conquerors, and we are. He promised that we can have peace even in tribulation because he's overcome the world, and we do. He promised that we can do all things through him who strengthens us, and we can. And if he told you that this too shall pass, be patient, it will. If he told you help is on the way, then hold still, it's coming. If he told you he's going to bring you out, then keep believing. Because when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Tell somebody God keeps his promise. And... When you're carrying the weight of your past and grieving what you've lost, hear me, choose carefully who you allow to walk with you. Because when you're carrying a heavy weight, you need people with you who have the same priorities as you. I'm not trying to tell you right here that you need to go ahead and cut some folk loose, but you do need to consider who it is you're granting exposure to your vulnerability. Because when you're weighted, worried, and wounded, you need somebody who will walk with you and not away from you. You need somebody who will encourage you to keep going and not criticize you because you're thinking about stopping. And you need somebody who values the word of God more than they do a dance on TikTok. You need somebody who can say, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah, I feel my help now. And the truth is, on this Resurrection Sunday, you might just be that person for somebody sitting next to you today. Because the truth is, they won't tell you, but they look real good on the outside, but you don't know what they're carrying. So would you do me a favor? This is talk back the end of the day. Would you lean over and tell them, I know it might look bad, but trouble don't last always. Come on, look at them. Come on, tell them. I know that thing is heavy. But baby, I got a feeling you were built for this. Come on, I know this might be uncomfortable, but somebody needs to hear this. Turn around and tell them, I know you're tired, but you're too close to a breakthrough to give up now. And tell them, I know you got questions, but God keeps his promises. Come on, look at him, ask him, how you know? Because he told me that I would live and not die. He told me that I would rise above my struggle. And if he said it, God will keep his word. <laughs> and I also know that in a crowd this big, y'all, there got to be a few folk in here who are saying, uh, Pastor, I appreciate all that encouragement this morning, but this thing here is heavy. And if the truth be told, I'm tired. Raise your hands that are shooting or don't do it. I, and... What you really want is some evidence that
said, you're going to get through this. And I hear you, and I'm going to do you one better. Not only are you going to get through this, but you are going to rise above it. Here's the question. What evidence does God give us that we'll overcome? Well, first thing is, he gives us demonstrative evidence. Whenever you're presenting a case in a judicial court, demonstrative evidence is primarily visual. It helps in order to conceptualize the witness's testimony. Th that's why the text teaches us that on their way to the tomb that morning, Matthew says that there was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. And I want you to understand that all of this seems just a bit dramatic. They're on the way to the tomb, finish the burial, and there's an earthquake. And then there's this appearance of an angel, shines bright, and sits on a tomb. But I want you to remember that all of this was not intended to accomplish the resurrection. It was done to present the evidence of the resurrection. <laughs> Stay with me. Watch this. God has a dramatic way of breaking into the routine and ritual of our lives to show us how he's working behind the scenes. That's why we worship the way we do in the black church. Because when we come in here on a Sunday morning, we do not come in here for a ritualistic experience. We are not here just to go through the order of service. If you did, you might be in the wrong place. Because with everything we've dealt with this past week, with all the weathering of worry and struggle that we have to go through as people of color, when we get to God's house after fighting all the traffic just to get in here, we come because we want to see God break in in a dramatic fashion. It is not that we are just drama-filled people. It's just that we want to see God move in a supernatural way and demonstrate his presence. We've walked all this week trying to hold it together, trying to look good and be strong for everybody else. And when we get here, we might come in here restored and dignified, but we left home saying, I need to see a move of God. To d Is there anybody in here who can say, you talking to me? Because I didn't come for you to play patty cake with me this morning. I, I didn't come for a real neat rehearsal. I came for you to help me to see God break some strongholds. I, I came because I need God to set some stuff free out of my life. I, I came because I want some heavy burdens moved out of my way, and I want a demonstration of his power. Y'all sitting there looking at me like y'all don't get it. I thought this was the part y'all really to jump. Would you look at somebody and tell them I need a demonstration that God is working on my behalf? And if you don't like a whole lot of movement, you're about to get uncomfortable. <laughs> Because with everything I've been going through, I came because I need God to break up some stuff in my life. And if he got to break in here, then so be. If he got to shake some stuff up, then so be. If he got to cause some stuff to move, then so be. Because I need a dramatic presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. Not only does he break in, but the text says, that going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. This is another reason why you got to keep going. Because God knows that there are some things standing between you and him that you can't move on your own. But if you keep going, you'll see that he's already got everything under control. Let me talk for a minute to my type A personality people in here. You do not have to have everything figured out in your life. 
God wants you to demonstrate that he won't let anything stand between you and him. And while you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. Text suggests that all of this was happening as they arrived. That, that, that means that the stone wasn't moved to let Jesus out and then he somehow snuck by them without them noticing him because Jesus didn't need the stone to be moved in order for him to get out. The stone was moved so that they could look in and see that it was empty. <laughs> Tell somebody, you need to look again, baby. Because if you're part of that I believe it when I see it crowd, then this is for you. Because God will allow you to go through some stuff so that he can show you what once held you couldn't hold you. That's why after God raises you in some certain areas, you can go back some places by some places that he used to constrain you and not even blink. Because you can look in and realize I might have been there in the past, but he's delivered me and given me eyes to see see he's able hallelujah let me let me hold my peace right here and to be honest y'all i really think that sometimes god just moves some things to show you he's able <laughs> he just moves some stuff to show you that there's no situation he can't handle because he's able there is no problem too big for him because he's able there is nothing he cannot move for you because he's able. There is nothing he cannot fix in your life because he's able. And I need about 123 of y'all in here who will just jump up and shout, I know he's able. <laughs> he's able to do what anybody, what nobody else can do. He's able <laughs> to make a way out of no way. <laughs> he's able <laughs> to keep my feet from falling. <laughs> he's able <laughs> to keep my head above the water and keep me from drowning. <laughs> he's able. And... He gives us demonstrative evidence, but he also gives us real evidence. In court, real evidence is physically, physical evidence that is intimately linked to the facts in the case. That, that's why you got to learn how to keep showing up in life. Because if you give up because of what happened in the past, you will miss the revelation of how it's working out for your good. The truth is, God does some things anticipating that you're on your way. Because when the wo women got to the tomb, the Bible says that the angel told them, do not be afraid. I know who you're looking for. It's Jesus who was crucified that's why you've made it through everything you've made it through because God wants you to see that he is able to help move some stuff on your behalf and your evidence to somebody else that God is a keeper because the last time they saw you you were in broken pieces They saw you struggle with that sickness. And you showing up today is evidence that what should have destroyed you did not kill you. Would you tell somebody, that's why you're sitting next to me today? Because I'm evidence for you that what the devil meant for evil... God meant it for good. Come on, y'all talk back today if you can. 
And the only reason I'm here is because God still moves in supernatural ways. The angel told the women, he's not here. He has risen. Here's what I wanted to get to. Just as he said, come see the place where he lay. <laughs> Dr. Walker, I was thinking this week for some of us real churchy folk, j j just saying he's not here <clears throat> it is enough for us to shout. <clears throat> Come on, is there anybody in here who came this morning and just hearing he's not here? Is all the evidence you need that he's overcome what came to keep you down? And we know that the fact that he's not here just testifies that death couldn't hold him. But I know that don't satisfy everybody. Because the scientific mind is sitting out here thinking, um, there's got to be a reason for that. Maybe somebody came and moved him. Or possibly they're at the wrong tomb. But the believer says, no, it's just evidence that the word still works. And the angel said, if that's you, you're right. Because he's risen just as he, I, I've been preaching the gospel now for over 30 years. And uh, I've, I've been a pastor in May 22 years now. But I've been um, black all my life. <laughs> and there are some things that are culturally specific for black folk, especially in our family relationships. And black folk know that you have officially run out of excuses with your parents when they get to the point where they have to say to you those four words. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> Some of y'all got flashbacks. Right there. That's when you tell your siblings, duck! <laughs> Did not tell you. Because what matters most is your obedience. And if you've been reading this word and in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ long enough, you already know that regardless of how things look, just be obedient to his word. And when it comes to the word of God, he promises that you will come through. So if you get to the end of your rope and you feel like you just can't go any further, then you got to learn how to hold on and remind yourself, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. <laughs> they shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Did not tell you. All you got to do is be still and know that he is God. Hallelujah. I'm done. He gives us demonstrative evidence and real evidence. And lastly, he offers us the opportunity to provide testimonial evidence. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Because <laughs> after everything you've been through, and after all that you have seen God do in your life, now you've come this far so that you can give a testimonial as to what the Lord has done in your life. In a judicial court, testimonial evidence comes from an eyewitness account. And so after seeing that the tomb was empty, 
the angel said to the women, now go quickly. <laughs> I wish I had time to talk about that quickly piece. But he said, go quickly and tell his disciples that you have seen he's risen from the dead. Because God will send some people to you in your seasons of disappointment to testify to you that they've seen him perform miracles. <laughs> I need about 50 of y'all to get on this train and say, let's ride. Because <laughs> I have seen God do some stuff <laughs> that I would have never believed <laughs> had I not seen it for myself. <laughs> when you cry your last tear and you still ain't got no answer for where you're at along comes somebody who will tell you hang on breakthrough is on the way anybody in here know that God has sent you somebody every now and then to remind you just when it looks the bleakest you gotta hang on in there cause God sees you and he's provided a way of escape for you when you're trying to figure out how you're gonna pay your bills how you're gonna feed your family God got somebody who he's already given an assignment to show up at this particular location and when you arrive they'll stop by and tell you hang on He'll meet all of your needs according to his riches in glory. And when you have the initial diagnosis and your mind has started to get in a tailspin, when you start to think to yourself, this could be it. Anybody ever been there before? When the doctor told you some news that made you stop thinking, I better get my affairs in order. But along comes somebody who God has assigned to show up at the right time in the right place and tell you he'll restore health and heal thy wounds because God will do exactly what he said he would do and I hate to push this y'all but that's why some of y'all are in here today because you got a testimony and you need to tell it I can't stand when folk come to church and dress up and come up in here and then sit up in here with their arms folded look like they've been sucking lemons all night long and then want to stand to preach as if their theme song is I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the rivers of water when the reality is you've seen God do for yourself what you never thought would ever happen in your life and if God has ever moved in a supernatural way you gotta tell somebody I've seen the Lord make a way out of nowhere come on I need some folk out in the fort. I needed just at least six of y'all who can turn to somebody and tell them that's me. God sent me here to tell you that if you're sick, God will bring you through. If you've been broken, God will raise you up. If you've been down, God will give you a new chance. If you've been depressed, God will give you joy. Unspeakable joy. And if they ask you, how do you know? Tell them he did it for me. And if he did it for me, he'll do the same thing for you the Bible says feel my help right here that the angel said go into Galilee and tell them that you're going to see him just like he told you would you tell somebody keep going cause there's more for you to see come on tell them like you mean to keep going cause there's no secret what God can do and if he's done it before he'll do it again yes he will yes he will yes he will oh before we go, I got one last thing to do. Since I done brought you in here to court this morning, I 
need to call some of y'all to the witness stand. If you're ready, would you just raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. You've been sworn in. Now I got a few questions for you. Is it true that you once were sick? Now please remember that you are unknown. Then if you were, how do you explain the fact that you walked up in here and you're still here? If you ain't got nothing to say, would you turn to your neighbor and tell them, I told you he's a very present help in a time of trouble. I need to ask you another question now. Is it true that you had an emotional breakdown that nobody knows about? Come on now, remember that you're still under oath. Then if that's true, how do you explain the fact that you still got joy? Come on, I've been looking at you. You've been up in here raising your hands, clapping your hands, lifting up your voice, but you've been down and depressed, almost leveled to the ground, and you got the audacity to come up in here and act like you got joy. Would you look at somebody and tell them I told you that this joy that I had, the world didn't give it to me, and the world cannot take it away. Next question. Is it true that the enemy tried to kill you? Come on, talk back to me if you can. Is it true that he set traps for you, tried to take you out, tried to keep you from getting up? Then how do you explain the fact that you're still here today? Would you look at somebody and tell them, I told you, he'll make your enemies your footstool and give you too much grace to step on. In fact, he'll throw you a party and he won't kick it off until they get there. Next question, please. Is it true that you've been depressed and almost gave up? That you almost threw in the towel last week? Then how do you explain that you had the audacity to come up in here this morning with a smile on your face? Would you look at him with a smile real big and tell them I told you he's close to the broken heart and those who've been crushed in spirit. Is there anybody in this place who can testify? I told you that he will take care of you. I don't know what your testimony is, but that's for you to tell. But before we go, there is one testimony that every one of us in here can shake. Because if you want to know how it is that you keep getting back up, I tell you, if you want to know how it is that you keep surviving the fire in your life, I tell you, if you want to know how it is that you keep walking through many dangers, toils, and snares, I tell you, if you want to know how it is that you keep holding on when you ain't got nothing left, I tell you, over 2,000 years ago, way back on a hill called Calvary, somebody knows that they lifted him up on that old rugged cross. Grandmama said, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens were rolled away. Somebody knows that they hung him high and they stretched him wide. They put nails in his hand. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And the Bible said he hung his head in the lock of his shoulders. And the old preacher said, he died. Didn't he die? He died until the moon dripped red and blood. 
he died until the earth began to shake. He died until the angels ran out to the balcony and began to sing out hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody in here knows he died on day Friday. He died on night Friday. He died on day Saturday. He died all night Saturday. But I need some good church folk in here to say, come on, past tell them. But, but, that's not how the story, come on, somebody shout, three days later, he rose again with all power in his hand, and because he got up, so can you. So come on, grab somebody by the hand and tell them, I told you that you're going to get through this. I told you that he's going to make a way out of nowhere. I told you that he's going to change your dark night into a bright morning. I told you that God will take care of you. I told you. Ha <laughs> ha! 